Hi everybody, welcome back to Jaffa Cooks and today I'm making bread and butter pudding. Before we start, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Click on the bell icon and get the latest updates and recipes. If you like this or other recipes and you want to know more, follow me on Instagram. Give me a big thumbs up if you really like my recipe. So the secret to bread and butter pudding is the bread. The bread is usually about a couple to three days old. If you leave it in the fridge with a hole in the bag, it'll eventually stale up. Um, so I've basically got my bread here. I'm going to butter it up. Um, so I'll see you back in a couple of minutes. And then, okay, welcome back. So I've buttered my bread and what I'm going to do now, just for the sake of ease, I'm going to do all the mixture first and then that way we'll move over to assembly. So I've got five eggs, around about 300 ml of regular milk and 250 ml of double cream. Now what we're going to do, the cream actually gives it that thick rich texture and taste whilst the milk gives it a watery substance so it starts spreading within the bread itself and starts getting absorbed. Now within this we're going to actually put in some vanilla extract so there's around about a teaspoon in there and I've got some cinnamon. The cinnamon gives it a nice flavour, it also gives it a nice smell as well. And I've got, whilst I'm whisking this, I've got some other ingredients as well. I've got brown sugar, I've got some raisins, and then I've got some apricot jam, which is watered down with some hot, hot water. Um, and whilst we're assembling the, the, uh, the bread and butter pudding, we're going to paste the apricot jam um, on each layer. So that gives it more of a homely taste. And as we paste it on, on the top, it then forms a nice crusty layer as well. Okay, so my mixture is ready. So I'm going to put that to one side. Back to the bread. Now, before we uh, start assembling it, there are two ways of making bread and butter pudding. One is the traditional way where you cut off the ends and crusts and you basically just use the inner piece of the bread. But in my household, we try not to waste anything at all. So yes, we could use them for breadcrumbs, but we'd like ours with nice crispy outside with a nice soft centered middle. So I'm going to basically just use the crust. You, if you feel like um, you want to take the crust off, by all means do so. So whilst all your pieces of bread are buttered, all you have to do is just cut them into triangles like I'm doing now. You do them two at a time or four at a time, just make sure you have a nice sharp knife, but do be careful. In the meantime, I've got a dish that I'm going to start layering. And that dish should be buttered, and I'll show you in a minute, if you haven't already buttered it. Right, back to my dish, and that's the dish I'm going to use for creating my bread and butter pudding. I've got some butter, so you could either use the inner side of the, the wrapper itself. Um, my wrapper ran out, so I'm just going to use a pasting brush, see if I can get some on there. And this should basically stop the, the drier side um, of the bread and butter sticking to the edges. Now I have known for people to butter both sides. And I think that's, <laughs> for me, um, that's just too much butter. But um, if, you've, if you've done this before and you feel like buttering both sides, um, I do go ahead. But I think one side buttering is enough for us. Okay, so this is nice and nicely buttered. I'm just going to put that to one side. Right, so let's get down to assembly. Okay, so basically the, the layering basically happens with the dry side on the bottom and the buttered side on the top. Now, you can layer it as you wish, as you fancy actually. I'm just layering it in, in the layers I've always was done in the past. So there's my layers. One there, another one there. And if you feel that you find yourself in a corner where a full piece won't fit, by all means cut it down to size. 
Right, so this is where with the apricot jam comes in handy. I'm just going to, don't want to put too much in because there's, each layer is going to have some, and if we have too much, then it may be an overkill. Just a, a few splashes here. Now. Just take some from the edges and put them onto the middle bits. Next, just take some raisins and sprinkle them over the, the bread and butter pudding. And then some brown sugar. Again, we don't have too much sugar in our house, but if you'd like to use honey, um, you could actually put it in the mixture. Uh, that's the, that's the, um, the milk and cream mixture. But um, for us, I think a little bit of sugar is okay. And it's brown as well, so it's better than white. Okay, so the next layer, again, very simple. Just going to take another layer of bread. And again, the same process, just take some apricot jam. It's going to form the third layer. I'm just going to put another tasting of some apricot jam. Now I'm just going to utilize the sides and tuck the bread in because obviously some of it sprung up and I'm going to cut some of my bread in rectangles just to ensure they fit in and that's basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill in as much bread as we can within the dish to make the dessert so it's packed as tight as it should be just maybe couple more pieces there. We don't want, it, don't want it too tight because this is going to rise as well obviously once it's in in the oven and the mixture goes in it goes into the oven this will rise. So I'm just going to finish it off with some more raisins. Now because this is the final crust I'm going to put some additional uh, apricot jam just so that when we do put this in the oven it forms a nice crusty layer and that crusty layer is really, really nice because it has that essence of um, apricot and the sweetness of the apricot. And then it has that crunchy taste to it. And then it also has the softy, chewy bits of the inner part of the, the bread as well. Now, the next part could get slightly messy if we've never done this before. So I always try and either do it with a ladle or transfer it into a, um, into a, a smaller jug. Let's try it off with the ladle and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so now here comes the mixture. So I've got a ladle and slowly just add the mixture. And as the mixture is poured, it'll start disappearing into the dish itself. Now, the, the whole point of having, a, um, having stale bread is that the stale bread will absorb and still stay um, springy whereas if it was fresh uh, bread it would absorb and just become a big lump of bread and wouldn't really rise as much so a little, little bit of TLC here will go a long way and once this is done I'm going to pop this in the fridge for about 20 minutes just for it to settle down and, and allow other parts of bread to absorb the mixture Okay, so once I'm finished, I'll show you what the end product looks like before I put it in the fridge. Okay, so this is what it look, should look like once all the, uh, the mixture has been poured in. And I would say there are a couple of areas where there are a few bits of dry bread. And what you could basically do is just tilt it slightly to ensure that all the other pieces of dry bread get covered with the mixture. Okay, so now my bread and butter pudding is ready but I'm going to now allow it to rest for about 20 odd minutes in the fridge. And then, or actually you could put it in the fridge or you could leave it outside if your, if your house isn't too hot or if your kitchen isn't too warm. Um, so I'm just going to pop mine in, in the fridge for a short while and then I'll bring it out 
in about 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll pop it in the oven for about 180 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. I'll see you then. Bye.